벤자민 로렌스 커털리 이우찬 씨입니다. 이우찬 씨는 89년 7월 25일에 태어나서 6개월 뒤인 다음해 1월에 미국행 비행기를 탔습니다. 뉴욕에서 새로운 삶을 시작한 그는 좋은 부모님을 만나서 한국임을 매우 자랑스러워하며 이제까지 자랐다고 말합니다. 여러분들 중에 혹시 90년대에도 해외 입양이 그렇게 많았었나 하고 의아하게 생각하실 분도 계실 텐데요. 많이 있었네요. 적지 않은 수의 아이들이 통계를 보면 미국과 유럽으로 입양됐습니다. 고마운 것은 우찬 씨가 입양이 되어 미국인 가정에 자랐지만 부모님은 한국 문화를 계속 지닐 수 있도록 그를 내내 도왔다고 합니다. 감사한 일이죠. 자 오늘은 조지아에 살고 있는 벤자민 커털리 이우찬 씨와 이야기 나눕니다. 화상으로 초대했습니다. 안녕하세요. 반갑습니다. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? How is everything going? Is everything going fine? Everything is going great. <laughs> Now, I know who you are. I have a bunch of paperwork and pictures right in front of me, but to our viewers, uh, tell them who you are, please. Uh, my name is Benjamin Catelli. Uh, I was born in Taejon City, and I was adopted when I was six months. Um, and I grew up in Rochester, New York. Now you uh, ask this uh, uh, agencies out there for paperwork and circumstances and some of the names and numbers from I see the name of the Eastern Welfare. What have you known and what have you found about the circumstances before and after you were born in uh, Daejeon or Shintanjin according to the paperwork? So I know the age, the approximate age of my Uh, biological parents um, and I'm aware that due to circumstances of them not staying together um, it's very hard to raise a child by yourself as a single mother in Korea mm. uh, so I was put up for adoption and my father was no longer um, with my mother so I was put up for adoption um, about the extent of what I know a lot of the documentation they only allow me to see what's approved or what's allowed Um, without consent from all the parties. I see. Now, about your mom and dad in Korea, uh, there's some explanation about their circumstances and ages and their last name. Uh, what do you know about them? So, my father's uh, last name is Lee, and then my mother's last name is Jung. Um, they were, my mother was 23. And my father was 24. Um, they were high school sweethearts, and it just did not work out between them. Um, so they decided to do what's best for me, and that was to put me up for adoption. I see. Now I have a beautiful pictures here. Um, when you are ready to be adopted overseas, I see your baby pictures, and I. Think it is a, a caretaker or is it a foster mom? Uh, that was my foster mom, and I do believe she's the one that named me as well. Is that right? So your mom and dad <clears throat> actually doesn't really know your real name when they were uh, uh, are prepping for your passport. The, I'm not sure. Okay. But that's what the conclusion was from what we were seeing. Your grandpa, the maternal grandpa mm -hmm. here in the United States. And a little baby pictures. Look at this dandy boy. Now, tell us what it was. Uh, what was it like uh, growing up here in the United States? You you talked about your mom and dad here, your older sister who was also adopted from Korea. Tell us. Oh well, it was very interesting. Um, I enjoyed it. My parents both could not naturally have. Children, so they decided to adopt. Um, first, they adopted my sister, um, and then I was adopted four years later. Um, and it was, it was great because I, I was brought into a house that really wanted to have children. So I was very blessed and fortunate to have um, a great family and a great upbringing. Um, growing up, my parents thought it was important for me to understand the Korean culture. So since I was about four years old, I went to a A Korean adoptive camp back in New York, um, called Camp Chingu. Okay. And it was it was really really cool, kind of to see a bunch of other children, the same kind of 
upbringing and backgrounds and things like that. The only difference was, was that I was one of the only children that grew up in the city, mm. whereas all the other children grew up in the suburbs of mm. Rochester. So that was, that was always kind of fun. And I worked at that camp all the way till I was about 17 years old. So that was a big part of me growing up. So my mom and dad, they just celebrated their 45th wedding anniversary. Wow, great. Um, Congrats. Congrats. Yeah. And uh, my mom was a school psychologist for her whole professional career. And then my dad was a, a social worker mm. um, helping disabled adults get jobs and maintain jobs and visit them on job sites and just kind of be, you know, kind of a parental guidance for them to help them do what they can and be the best versions of themselves they can be. Um, I was always big into sports. My parents always supported me mm. doing that. Um, soccer, basketball, tennis, things like that. Um, very close with my sister as well. Our children are, are close in age now. Uh, my son is five and my daughter is eight. And then her daughter is four. Mm. So it's all right in the same ages. But um, my parents are just two of the most... Uh, most unselfish people that you can ever come mm. across. Um, they're just, they're just fantastic humans. Um, and they, they just mean a lot to me. So i um, doing the whole process to kind of figure out more about my biological heritage was always kind of tough for me because I didn't want to feel like they didn't do a good job wow. or, or they weren't enough for me. So that's been something that I've dealt with as I've gotten older and more mature realizing that it, it's okay and they're okay with it as well. Um, but I was just really blessed and fortunate to have them as my parents. I see. Well, the Helping Kids runs in the family. I, I was told that you are sending your kids to a dual language program, uh, even if we there's are. a long commute every morning. What's the, uh, what's the motivation for that? So again, the culture and um, just being aware that um, Everybody is different. Everybody is unique. And uh, we drive them about 45 minutes to school. So my son just started there in kindergarten. My daughter is going into third grade. Um, and they've both been learning Korean since uh, about first grade. And my son's starting just now in kindergarten. Mm. But this is the culture and the values um, are really big to, to my wife and I um, about learning and understanding, you know, where they kind of come from. Okay. Now... Everything, I mean, I, it, is, it is a still initial stage that you started this journey, uh, looking for your mom and dad over there in Dejan. And I, I do believe you have a good leads and clues on the paperwork. And I do believe it'll happen. If that happened, that you were sitting down at a table with your mom and dad, or mom and dad, for the very first time, over there in Seoul, somewhere, are there any things that you want to tell them? Well, knowing kind of a little bit more about the what's and the why's of why I was put up for adoption, um, the first and foremost thing that I would like to tell them is that um, I appreciate what they did for me. I, and I know it was not easy, you know, giving up your son, but for wanting me to have the best possible life I could that they could not provide, um, I want to say thank you. Um, and then as far as just the emotion of having a connection to somebody biologically, um, would be tremendous for me because the only biological or blood that I am aware of are my two children that I had. Mm -hmm. Um, so having my children of my own was always a very big thing for me and to my wife as well, but just kind of knowing the kind of getting to know them, their personality, their quirks, and, you know, why I am the way I am. Um, just, I think. Yeah. I know you're in, in the industry of uh, HVAC. Uh, you told mm -hmm. me that you have a kind of a good hands that is handed out from your mom. And also this good sportsmanship from your mom and dad here in the United States. Tell us about it. So from a very young age, I was always very good with my hands at building, fixing things. Um, and my adoptive father is not handy at all. So mm. it's 
he always jokes that, you know, he gets it from, I get it from him, but he knows that that's not the truth. Um, but it, on my paperwork, it found uh, that my father was a mechanic. Mm. My biological father was a mechanic and that my wife, were, or my wife, I, my mother worked in a factory. I see. So, you know, kind of all those skills put, put together have made me naturally uh, very high aptitude for mechanical uh, abilities and fixing things and troubleshooting. Um, that's just naturally in me. So I think that's <laughs> It's very interesting. And now I was told that you were planning to go back to Korea with your children uh, next year somewhere after all this series of uh, pandemic years. Now tell us your plan. Tell us your plan, where you're going, uh, what to do. I know your wife is helping you a ton. What are you going to do? So we would definitely probably fly into uh, Seoul and then we would go to now I am not the best at pronouncing some of these places, um, but we definitely want to go to Taejeon City and then um, the Nanta Theater. Um, there's a couple palaces, mm. but also the city that, um, the birth city of my father that we had on record. Um, so we want to kind of go, we'd spend a fair amount of time out there as well, probably like a month or so, and just really, um, dive deep into the culture because where we live in Georgia and where my kids go to school, mm. there's a very large Korean population. So oh, yeah. we, mm. we go there all the time and eat foods. And then, um, Chuseok, I believe, is that the Korean Thanksgiving or Ex exactly it's coming right up tomorrow, right? The it, that is so we're going to the festival friday and saturday wow and, okay um, my kids are very excited about it mm. and so, so am i of course but it would just be fantastic to take my family to where i originated from mm. and um that's why it's very important for me and my wife to kind of give my children the opportunity to understand and learn so they're being able to read and write um which is i can't do any of those things they are able to do it and and kind of have an identity within themselves so okay hopefully get a taste of a bit of a k-pop and also um, korean mm -hmm. food down there in a chuseok festival in atlanta mm -hmm. uh, thanks for your time ben uh, we'll keep in touch and let us know what's up and also you are planning to go back to korea uh, so maybe there's something that we can help you out oh that'd be fantastic i appreciate it all right thank you ben all right. Thanks, Ryan. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Yu Cha Shin은 아까도 들으셨듯이 한국의 신 아버지의 손재주를 닮아서 이 기술, 기계 등을 잘 다루는 사람이 됐다고 기뻐했습니다. 그리고 미국의 아버지를 닮아서 운동을 잘 즐기고 또 정신적으로도 강건한 사람이 됐다고 그렇게 자랑을 했는데요. 네. 일단. 지금까지 제가 만나본 많은 입양한, 입양인들 중에 가장 밝고 힘이 넘치는 청년이라는 생각을 했습니다. 매우 기분이 뿌듯하고 좋습니다. 좋은 일들이 더 많이 있을 것 같은 느낌이에요. 저희 채널과 영상을 최소한 10명의 지인과 친구분들에게 좀 전달을 해주시면 어떨까요? 그리고 이 영상을 지인에게 추천받아서 혹시 보시게 되었다면 또 다른 10분들에게 좀 퍼뜨려 주시면 좋겠습니다. 우리 우찬 씨가 부모님을 좀 찾을 수 있게요. 루킹 포 맘투게더는 한국의 보건복지부산 아동권리보장원과 저희 미주중앙일보가 함께 만들고 있습니다. 여러분들이 도와주셔서 만들 수 있습니다. 다시 한번 감사드리고요. 저는 다음 영상에서 여러분들 다시 만나겠습니다. 고맙습니다.